<laughs> my name is Mick, and I, I wanted to talk to you about God and how I came to meet him. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to tell you about a bumper sticker um, that used to be prevalent years ago, and it read, um, he who has, when you die, he who has the most toys wins. And that pretty much dictated my life. I, I um, made a habit of accumulating stuff but the more stuff that I got, um, I discovered it, it didn't fill the void. It didn't fill that hole that I always felt. <clears throat> I'd watch my wife, Kate, and kids go to church every Sunday. Of course, I'd stay home and I'd make lunch and I made them hot dogs. And by the way, my kids today hate hot dogs. Um, and I'd go with Kate and some of her Christian friends to Bible study, but not, not to learn. Um, I, I went to argue because I thought that they needed a crutch uh, to get through life, and that crutch was God. And so if you fast forward um, a few years, I was at program management school in Fort Belvoir, <clears throat> and I uh, was taking a, some master's degree courses at night. And I developed a kink in my large intestine. And it was pretty painful. Um, and so I went to the hospital and they wanted to operate. And I told them, I said, look, I, I don't have time uh, for surgery at this point. And so just wheel me out in the hallway. And hopefully this thing will unkink itself and go back to what I was doing, which was really a dumb idea. Um, the, the, it burst. And so parentonitis, uh, which is poison, um, spread throughout my body. And so they willed me into surgery. My heart and lungs were failing. Um, and I obviously survived that. The uh, surgeon came afterwards and talked with me, and he said, look, um, I removed part of your bowel. I, I wiped everything down, all your organs down. <clears throat> and I'm going to fill you full of antibiotics, uh, but I won't guarantee that you'll survive the night. And so... Um, I got to see Kate and my kids for what potentially was the last time. And I, I couldn't sleep that night for obvious reasons. Um, and I lay there thinking, so what's going to happen if I die um, at this point? I mean, I got all this stuff. Doesn't mean anything when you're faced with death. And so I prayed. I prayed to God and said, Lord, I... I've lived my life uh, my own way for the last 40 years, and at this point, it amounts to nothing. And so, show me a better way to live. And, and he did. And he does to this day. Um, and I, you know, it's funny, the, the night nurses um, got tired of hearing about God. I think they, they, um, they figured it was a morphine-induced hallucination. But when I made that prayer to God, I never felt such a peace and calmness uh, that came over me and a, and a happiness um, of knowing God as my personal Lord and Savior. And so the next morning, I, mean, I was just, I became a jabbermouth. I'm a man of few words normally, but I just wanted to talk about God. And so, guess who I called? Uh, I called those people that I used to argue with at Bible study. Um, and they came to pray with me. And you know, before they got there, I was thinking about what it would be like, like this light was going to be shining down from heaven and you hear this booming voice of God as we were praying. Um, in reality, I had diarrhea. <laughs> we, we started praying and I never made it to the bathroom. But it didn't matter. What mattered was God was there, and we knew that, um, even with all this stuff that was going on. Um, we still knew God was there, um, and we continued to pray. And that was probably um, one of the most heartfelt prayers um, that I ever said in my life. And so, After I left the hospital, um, 
I went home, my mother was there because I was potentially going to die. <clears throat> and my mom went home early because um, she said I talked about God too much. Um, I picked up a Bible um, and read it from front to back. I started with Genesis and ended up with Revelation. Uh, by the way, I would not suggest that to any new Christians, but um, that's what I did. Um, because I wanted to know to get this, I wanted to get to know this God um, better. And and I am now 66 years old. And so, if you ask me how my life has changed since I've come to know God, I will tell you that um, I still have toys. Don't get me wrong; I'm sitting in one or RV. But these toys don't dictate my life. They're not my life's goal. Um, I buy stuff, but, but I give it to other people, and that's what makes me happy. I have found that my spiritual gift is serving, and so doing things, renovating homes, building stuff, whatever, whatever needs done, is also what makes me happy. I made a promise to God um, in my early days of Christianity, and I said, look, Lord, I've got all these tools, and I will now use those to help other people. And so that's how my life has changed. I, I look forward to my own Bible study now. It's a men's Bible study. It's multi-church, multi-generational. Uh, it's kind of a neat group. We started out as a six-week um, study, and we've been meeting um, for years plus. And so I thank God um, for him coming into my life. And I asked him to change my life, show me a better way to live, and he did, and he still does to this day. So, thanks.